Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the August 20th uh, M&A card uh, this weekend, obviously. I had a pretty good uh, good shot at it last week, just uh, kind of ran out of steam in the last couple of fights, but we hit uh, a couple of good ones uh, last week. For those of you who were following along this uh, this preview, we really had our uh, <laughs> really had our hands on uh, what we were supposed to do last week. This week, I think it's a very very straightforward card. In other words, there's 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 several themes that are going to be recurring during this entire slate. And I want to talk to you about something that happened last week that's been kind of happening recently is the striker versus grappling matchups. And when we talk about this quite a bit, um, they seem to put a lot of these things together. And what you have is kind of a battle between the MMA betting public and the MMA DFS public. And the reason why is because the DFS public really wants to favor the grapplers because of the way you know, DFS scores. But what happens is, is that sometimes these style matchups are not exactly that great for the, for the wrestler. And, and this was in full display this past weekend. You had several, you know, favorites, whether the actual favorites or at least favorites in the DFS community that they had win conditions that were completely predicated on their ability to get takedowns. And yes, if they did get their takedowns, they would have scored well, but the strikers have been really, you know, uh, doing very well in these matchups. I mean, the Angela Hill, Lupe Godinez one was a, a perfect example. I mean, we talked about how Angela Hill does have very, very good takedown defense. However, you know, if Godinez were to get the takedown, she'd be in line for a good score. So the DFS community just kind of piled on Godinez and the way the styles matched up, it was kind of a tricky spot for her because she had been, you know, dominating um, uh, opponents that had no takedown defense. But the one time that she faced someone that had takedown defense, that being Carolina, she lost. And after that Carolina fight, she faced two fighters who couldn't stop her plan. And as a result, she was an extremely kind of popular play on the slate um, this past week because of all that takedown upside. Everybody looked at her game logs. They saw that she had multiple, multiple takedowns. They knew that was her path to victory. And, you know, the fact is, is that they put her in a position where they where Angela Hill. I mean, her takedown defense was no joke. So, you know, if, 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 goes the way it could have gone, meaning Angela Hill was able to stuff the takedowns or make it so that um, Cadenas didn't want to attempt the takedowns because of Angela Hill striking. It was, it was, it, it was the perfect situation for a real DFS bust. And that's what happened with Luke Godinez. And then likewise, you had another striker versus a uh, grappler matchup where you had Quinlan versus Witt, where we, we all knew it was going to happen. If Witt were able to get, you know, this takedowns and keep the, keep it going, then he would be a very live underdog, but otherwise he was dead and he got one takedown, but then he was just had the, the striker over grappler that style just went out and Quinlan just knocked him silly. And, and then there was another one, um, Cavillo against, um, is Nunez where we knew going in, if, if Cavillo was going to win, it's, it was going to be because she was going to get takedowns, but Nunez was the better striker. And Nunez kept Cavillo at bay. She pieced her up on the feet. And, you know, Cavillo, who turned out to be a pretty popular play, um, was uh, ended up busting. And there was a fourth one as well, which I kind of forgot. Oh, the Jared, Go uh, Jared, uh, was Jared Gordon? I think it was Jared Gordon. Uh, who was it last week? Whoever it was, there was a, another striker versus grappler where – um, uh, we were actually on the right side of that one. Yeah, it was Jared Gordon. And uh, we took the striker, Marazov, but it was the, the typical thing. You know, like if, if, if Gordon were able to get those takedowns, he was going to do fine. But he, for some reason, the strikers have been kind of trumping the, the, the grapplers of late. And maybe there's something to it. Maybe, just maybe, when you have that kind of clash of styles, it's just more likely that the strikers are able to fend off the takedowns and 
And it's just, it's very possible that it's just more likely that the strikers, because of the way they, you know, they, they jab and they, they strike, they keep the, 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 the wrestler at bay. So it's not to say that, you know, and it makes it, it makes it somewhat interesting because they do reward the grapplers in, in DK points for all these takedowns, but you know, it, it's looking like it's becoming more and more difficult you know, to get those takedowns when you have kind of a, 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 a real clash of styles there, especially when one of the parties is, it knows how to stuff those takedowns. And this is uh, becomes very apparent in this card as well, uh, where we'll get to, you know, we'll get to some of these a little bit later. Yet still, when you're analyzing these from a DFS perspective, you still want to, all else being equal, right, um, take the guy with the wrestling upside because that's just going to score more than a striker in a decision victor. Um, so with that said, let's, let's attack this card. And it's an interesting card because there are only a couple of fights that have really strong inside the distance props and they are extremely, they, they stand out. Uh, they, they, they stand out in a very, very strong way. And we're going to deal with those first. And then we're going to talk about a bunch of, uh, of grappling upside plays which you're just going to have to deal with. Um, and we'll get to the main event when we get to it. But the, 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 the two fights that really seem to lay over the field here, and there may be a second one, uh, maybe a third one, is first of all, this, um, this Costa versus Rockhold fight. You have Costa is a minus 340 favorite. And if you look at the inside the distance prop, uh, fight doesn't go to decision is a minus 280. And more to the point, you have... Costa winning inside the distance is a minus 165, which is extremely strong. Like that, that type of, that type of um, inside the distance prop is usually someone that's above about 9K. But you have Costa who is relatively cheap and he's 8,700. So that's a really, really uh, strong play. And it's probably going to be owned, but, but we'll get to that aspect of it in a minute. Um, the next one, which probably should have been the first one I went over, is is Pedro versus Hunsucker. Not only is Pedro an eight to one favorite, but you look at the inside of this, this prop, it's kind of ridiculous. It's minus 1400. It's not good a decision. Uh, more to the point, you have Pedro winning inside the distance is minus 550. I mean, those types of numbers should be, you know, you should have Pedro at, at 12K. OK, if there were dynamic price. So these two plays right off the bat, Pedro and Costa, are plays based on the inside of distance props that are just really, really strong. And if you look through it, there are a couple of kind of OK plays as well. But usually you'll find more than two um, fights with, in, with inside the distance props that strong. Um, this week, you don't have that many of them. But let's go over some of them. Uh, starting with this first fight of the night, this uh, Almatrano versus De Silva, this is kind of the next best one. You have Almatrano, this fight is a minus 250 to finish, which is extremely strong, especially given the um, the pricing. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And even if you break it down between the two fighters, you have Almatrano inside the distance is, um, where is he? is about a pick them like plus 120 which is fair and even you have silva inside the distance is plus 250 and that's not bad either considering price like for example you look at almatrano he's 8600 and the silva is 7600 i think both these guys are, are pretty pretty fair inside the distance props on both these guys and given the fact that this is a uh, first fight of the night um, and it usually doesn't take that much ownership. I think this is a very sneaky fight to kind of target here. You could go after both of these fighters, given they're inside the distance props, um, and and have a pretty uh, pretty strong bit of leverage over some other uh, mid-range plays, which we will get to a little bit later. Um, let's look at some others, uh, some other inside the distance props, just to show you. And we'll get back to this in a minute. But the uh, uh, Aori Lang against Perrin fight, this uh, is, what is this, to, to, to finish? This is, um, uh, fight doesn't go to decision. Fight goes to decision is minus 180. Poor inside the distance prop. You have, then you have 
Albazi versus Figueredo. This one's about a pick em to go to decision. That's not so great. You have Fletcher Lusa again, you know, minus 160 to go to decision. That's not good. You have Maverick against Young, which is kind of interesting because this is about a pick em, but all of the all of the, the equity is in Maverick. Like, for example, you look at Maverick, saying Maverick winning inside the distance is about a pick em. That's actually pretty strong. You know what I mean? Now she's a you know, she's pretty high priced, so we're gonna get to that in a minute, but that's actually not bad for her. Um, you go back to Woodson, uh, Saldana, about a pick em, nothing great there. You have Gordon Santos, again, about a pick em, nothing great there. You have Tybura Romanov, just based on the fight doesn't go to decision line. This isn't bad. It's minus 160. Um, and most of it is in the Romanov camp. And we'll get to some other stuff about him in a minute. Romanov inside the distance. Again, it's about a pickup, which is fine. It's about the same as Miranda. But we'll get to some other aspects of this in a second. Um, Wu against Pudilova. This is probably awful. Yeah, fight doesn't go. Well, minus three to one to go to decision. Uh, we talked about Pedro. Uh, uh, Marab versus Aldo. Just on the inside, the distance prop is pretty poor. Minus 200. And then... Uh, Costa we talked about, and the main event is about a pick to finish. Is that about right? It's five rounds. Um, um, it, it's still even favorite to go to decision. So when it comes to the inside the distance props, throughout the card, you don't see that much kale upside. I mean, all you're really getting it is you're getting some, you're getting the the the, the Pedro Hunsucker fight, right? You're getting the Costa Rockhold fight. And in a sneaky way, you're getting some of this Almatrano uh, to Silva fight. Um, now, that doesn't mean that there's other fights can't score well, right? But with strictly the inside the distance prop really is about those three fights. However, as I mentioned earlier, there's another recurring theme about this card, and that is the grappling upside. There are one two um three at least three um why can't i think of the third yeah three fights that are kind of mid-ranges type fights or or maybe a little bit uh, a little bit higher that have incredible grappling and wrestling upside that you're going to have to deal with and i guess from the top down as far as as price goes we're going to go back to Romanov for a second. So Romanov, not only is he a minus 400 favorite, and not only is it the fight doesn't go line, I mean, not the worst, minus 160, him winning by TKO or submission is not that bad. Uh, what is this? Romanov inside the business, distance about a pick him. But even in decisions, Romanov can crush because he has multiple takedowns, in his in his arsenal, not only does he have multiple takedowns, but he is the ultimate takedown guy because not only does he take the guy down, he doesn't hold him down and just kind of wear on him. He tries to get on top of him and beat the crap out of him. He tries to put to to mix in ground and pound with the takedowns, and that is DraftKings gold. Um, look, look, it's good to have takedowns. You know, and control time that that is one way to 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 get garner points. But the two better ways to get points in um, with uh, with wrestling is to take them down and ground and pound them, or to take them down, let them get up, and take it down again. <laughs> and we're going to get to that in a minute. So, so what's it? so Romanov is an extremely extremely strong play here because not only. Does he have a decent inside the distance prop? Not only is he a huge win favorite, but in almost all of his wins, he's going to score well just because his, I mean, just because his whole path to victory is going to be trying to get those takedowns and bury the guy. So um, unless Tybura was the kind of guy who had incredible takedown defense, I don't see a world where Romanov is not a real core play here. Um, so I think that Romanov 
it, just the combination of his inside the distance prop plus those takedowns, I think he's an extremely strong play. Um, is Tybura a live underdog here? You know, I'm trying to make the case for it, but it's just tough, you know, just because the style matchup is tough. He's really not going to knock him out. You really have to count on him winning a kind of a greasy decision, I think. Um, and I, although it's 7,200, it's not bad to get a decision like that. Boy, it's a it's a tough ask for him, I think. So uh, I don't think he's going to be really part of the underdog pool, at least at least in the in, in my main line. So I mean, if I get to him in, in MMV, maybe. But um, I do think that Romanov is an extremely strong player. Um, okay, the next two, um, AJ Fletcher versus Ang Lusa. So this is a one of the real key fights. Um, because you have a, a, first of all, the pricing is 8,400, 7,800. And you have A.J. Fletcher, who displayed all kinds of takedown upside in his last fight. Um, he came in as, with with some degree of skepticism, he had some really, really, you know, some, some kind of some sketchy competition coming into his UFC debut on short notice. And, and he really gave a good account of himself as a 2 one underdog against Matthew Semmelsberger. And he did so by putting on a big pace, which is good for DraftKings scoring, put on a lot of takedowns and takedown attempts, which is really good for DraftKings scoring. And, you know, I, it's extremely, uh, it's an extremely strong play. Now, the problem is if he doesn't get the takedowns, um, I, there could be a problem, right? And we talked about this heading into this. But like I said, you know, Instead, in, in, in the absence of evidence that Lusa has incredible takedown defense, I think you're just going to have to go with this. You know, is Lusa a good leverage play? Well, sure. You know, like if, if Fletcher is going to be really popular as a result of all this, then sure. I mean, Lusa, I look, he's only, a, what is he, 160, 140 underdog or something like that. I mean, he's 135 underdog. He's going to win the fight a decent amount of time. But I'm looking at the, the inside the distance prop and just doesn't look like Lusa is going to win this inside the distance. And how much is he really going to score in, in, a, in a decision? What's loose inside the distance plus plus one forty? excuse me, plus 400. I just think that's really poor. You know, I, I think that I would not play Lusa as my underdog here, but AJ Fletcher, I mean, I just don't see how you don't play this. This has got all the upside of the, first of all, he's a favorite. Okay. Second of all, he's got all kinds of takedown upside and the pricing is right. So, and, and look, if, if he doesn't get the takedowns, if for, for whatever reason, Luce is, has really good takedown defense or gets, you know, or, or, or obviously, if, or if he loses Fletcher and he's going to bust, but even in, in spite of what's happening in the last couple of weeks with these wrestlers, strikers versus grapplers, I still think that you have to play these guys because listen, in the absence of finishing upside, where else are you going to get your points, right? You can't just play these strikers with no inside the distance prop. You know what I mean? Um, you have to either play strikers with KO upside or wrestlers regardless of KO upside. And this is one of the one of the guys you have to play. That's AJ Fletcher, I think. Or at least put him in your, in your very short list of, of guys to play. Um, we're going to get back to Maverick in a second. The next big fight that you have to get right, I think, is uh, is Ori Lang versus Jay Parent. Okay. So you have Ori Lang, who is a minus 150 favorite, right? Um, but there's been this, uh, this talk that Parent has some grappling upside. Okay. Now, I have to say that I was, when I first looked at this card this week, I thought, Corey Lang was just a freaking lock and load, you know? Um, I just watched him a couple of times. This Perrin dude is he's more of a guy that'll wear on you against the, the fence. And I I just from what I saw of Corey Lang, I and mean, he's just bigger than everybody else. Um, and he's and if Perrin goes for takedowns against this guy, it's just, it's just not gonna work. So I thought Perrin, I thought that Corey Lang was Aaron Lang was kind of a lock, and I was gonna lock him in pretty much. Um, remember, I saw him have pretty good takedowns himself against um against uh, Molina 
So throughout the course of the week, I mean, I've heard Perrin getting all this steam here. Um, he's a plus 120 on the money line, and he is priced at 7,700. So it's probably a decent, pure, pure play here. Because again, the only way he listen, the only way he's winning is if he does somehow get a lot of takedowns against Corey Lang. But I don't know. I'm I'm a little suspicious of it if you want to know the truth. I mean, I'm gonna have to play some of it for all the reasons I just described as far as Fletcher goes. But maybe I'm just kind of imposing my own opinion on this. But I, from what I've seen of, of Corey of, of Corey Lang, look, he had a problem with what's his name? With um was it Cody Durden? I just want to make sure I get the guys right. Yeah, he gave up some takedowns to Cody Durden, which was a problem, but I don't know. I mean, the, the, the Perrin guy is just not, I don't know, it's just not, he doesn't scare me for whatever reason. So uh, I, I feel as though this fight, if I play it, I'm probably going to end up bucking the system here and probably playing more Ori Lang than Perrin, even though Perrin's the one who looks like he has the, the, the takedown upside. I, I, I'm, I, Listen, if, if you want a, a, a really big, uh, whatchamacallit, a, a prop bet or whatever, if you can get Ori Lang, you know, plus huge money for getting more takedowns than Perrin, I mean, I would try it because I think Ori Lang has some takedown upside of himself. So I think this could be, I don't want to say even sneaky, um, but I think this is a good, I think the Ori Lang side is a really good play. Um, I am going to have some Perrin just to be a purist and have to take the guy with the takedown upside where his entire path to victory depends on it. Um, but I, I think I'm gonna have more of Ori Lang in this spot. Uh, Albazi Figueredo. We we talked about this. On, oh, well, we're gonna get back to it. Sorry. About that. Let let me uh, let me continue on the the theme here. The I probably buried the lead a little bit because the 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 most egregious example of this striker versus grappler matchup that we've seen in quite some time is in this 8200 AK matchup between Marab uh, Dehashvili and Jose Aldo. Marab, De, Marab is basically a takedown machine. Okay, if you look at this, he has 12, 13. This one's interesting, the two here, then five and four. And, and not only that, but he puts on a, just a nonstop pace. I mean, he has, a, he has insane cardio, which certainly helps considering this is this fight card is being uh, fought in, in Salt Lake City where you have high uh, high altitude so your your cardio advantage is going to be probably magnified and Jose Aldo is 35 or 36 years old so this is a really huge cardio advantage for for someone who wants to press a heavy pace so he's got a lot of advantages i mean the the, the thing is with this matchup is that H Jose Aldo he has a 90% takedown defense, okay? So this is going to, I think, scare people off because, and maybe for good reason, because if, in fact, he doesn't get his takedowns, um, Marab, I mean, he's on the wrong end of this, right? Like this fight here against Dodson, it says he had two takedowns. He had 20 takedown attempts in this fight. Now, he ended up finally getting them and getting the job done here at a huge favor, okay? But, you know, it wasn't um, it, 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 that wasn't a good look, like two for 20, you know, against someone who might not have the greatest takedown defense. Imagine if if he can't get any. If he only gets one or one takedown or, God forbid, zero against Aldo, he could, he could have a problem here. However, uh, the, the problem is, is that these scores are just too big to not – avail yourself of if things go your way i mean look if you have if you don't have a guy who scores 130 fantasy points you're just not winning especially at 8200 and even though aldo has a 90 percent takedown defense from what i've heard he had never really fought anybody like this before and most of his experience against wrestlers was years ago so I, I just I just I just feel as though I'm just gonna have to play him around here. I'm just gonna have to do it. You know. Um, am I gonna have some Aldo? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if Aldo's gonna knock him out. Um <laughs> Murad took a lot of punishment against Marais two fights ago, and he came back from that and just buried him. So I, I don't know if Aldo can win in a KO 
I think he's going to be spending just way too much time defending takedowns to put up much offense here. He can win by, you know, I don't know, can he catch him with a counter? Maybe. But I think that that Aldo's path to victory is more, you know, defending the takedowns, you know, get, you know, winning a striking battle and just winning a decision. Um, and remember, Aldo doesn't need a knockout. Like, he's trying to make a run for the title here. He doesn't need anything flashy. He just needs the W. So he's not going to be, you know, he's going to mind his P's and Q's. If he, like, gets out of that first round without getting taken down, for example, he's just going to stay away from it and just try to get the win. Um, so I think that Aldo's, I mean, but the problem is <laughs> Marab is going to keep pushing him. You know, I don't know. I, every time I think of this fight, I just can't see the world where Marab's pace is is going to be able to be countered by Aldo. Hey, if it, if it does, great. And yes, in MME, I'll probably have a few slivers of Aldo. But I don't know. The, the, those ceilings are just way too big. And I will throw this in also. You know, Aldo might just have enough takedown defense to get up after <laughs> Marab takes him down so that he can get taken down again. And that's the thing about Marab. I mean, he is he takes guys down, and then he doesn't really hold them down that long. He sometimes lets them get up so he can take them down again. And all this is is just DraftKings gold. So you just gonna. I think you just have to play him. And if listen, if Aldo is the goat, and he you know come and he, and he outstrikes him and he knocks him out, great. But I think that that ceiling on Marab is just too high to 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 avoid. Um, okay, um, let's take a look at a couple of other fights because you're gonna have to find some underdogs to play here. Um, we did uh, identify a couple of them, but let's take a look at some others. So this Maverick, first of all, this Maverick Shanna Young fight. Um, I, I feel as though this is gonna get my money somehow, and I don't know which side it's going to go on. Um, you have Miranda Maverick, who has, as I mentioned before, about a pick'em inside the distance, and at ninety three hundred, that's not great, but she has takedowns as well. You know, in her last fight. She had four takedowns and route to 110 fantasy point second round victory. Um, so she does have the ability to, to put up a score, you know, and several fights before that in October, she had 110 in a first round KO. So she does have upside. The, the numbers on, on, for example, Romanoff and what's his name, um, Pedro and Tosti are just much stronger than hers. So uh, if you're going to play her, it's going to be an ownership play. And the other thing is that last week people played Godinez, you know, with the same kind of idea that, that they were going to take the woman fighter to hopefully get the wrestling and the upside and all that stuff. And everybody got burned. So I have a feeling that Maverick is going to be pretty low owned. Not to mention that Maverick was a late addition to the slate um, on DraftKings. So I think for all those reasons, I think she's going to be significantly lower owned. Than, well, she's definitely be lower owned than Pedro, Costa, and um, what's his name? Uh, Romanov. I think that she out, she, listen, she can get 100. Can she get 120? Like, I don't know about that, but. I don't know how she outscores like Pedro. But that's the problem because um, Pedro really rates to finish in the first round. But so you know, Maverick could too, and Maverick can finish with some with some ground and pound after so, uh, a submission after some takedowns too. It's a tough ask, but I might I might think about it. And while I'm at it, Shannon Young knocked out Gina Mazzani in the second round at seventy three hundred. Okay. The reason why I bring that up is Gina Mazzani, for whatever she is, she is a wrestler. Okay, She was a grappler. And you'll notice here that Shiana Young had a reversal. So I feel as though she's got a path. You know what I mean? She's got a path to victory here. She fought against Stephanie Egger here, and she did lose. She got kind of swarmed a little bit, but but Egger again is is a is a really really strong strong grappler. I don't know. I think it's sixty nine hundred. I think that Shiana Young is very live on this card. I just 
I, I just feel that Miranda Maverick, I mean, if I told you nothing else except for the fact that she was she lost two of her last three fights, you know, and it's not like she was a big underdog. Like one of them, 8,400, another one, she was 8,400. She was a small favorite, I'm thinking all of these. I mean, I don't know. I just have this weird feeling that this fight's going to end up optimal. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be playing this, and I probably will have some of both sides. Um, okay, let's go back to some of this other stuff. Um, Albazi Figueredo, um, just, I guess Albazi is live at 9,100, right? 9,200, 9,100. But like the fight doesn't go to decision line is... Plus 140. Does he have takedowns in his arsenal? Let's take a quick look again. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe. And look, it's got listen, this 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 would be just fine. 107 first round, one takedown, 9200, that would be just fine. Um and who knows if the Romanov thing stalls out somehow, you know, let's say Tabora clinches him up the whole time and doesn't get the takedown, that it's a boring fight somehow. Um, it's tough. It's tough to get to Albazi here. It just is. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll, pro I'll probably end up passing, but in MMB, I'll probably get a sliver or two. AJ Fletcher, we talked about. Um, Lusa, not interested. So then let's look at some of these other fights. Uh, Saldana versus Woodson. This is, to me, just kind of a boring, you know, fight where you have a really strong boxer um, who's probably going to win with a very poor inside the dis inside uh, the distance prop. I mean, you have Woodson, who is plus 180 for TKO with no grappling upside. I mean, he's plus 180 at 8,800 8, or something like that. I'm going to rather take Costa, you know? Um, so I think that Woodson is probably a favorite I'm going to probably avoid. And likewise, Saldana, though, I'd look for him to maybe be plus 400 or something like that to finish. Let's see what he is. Saldana said this is now he's plus 600. So this is probably something I'm going to pass. But here's an interesting one. Oh, that's why I thought it was Jared Gordon. It wasn't Jared Gordon. I forget. Who who was it last week that had the takedowns that we faded with Marisov? I don't know. Whoever it was. Um, so Gordon Santos, first of all, poor inside the distance prop. And not only that, you have Gordon himself plus 180 to finish inside the distance at 8,800 or whatever. But this is kind of cool. You have Santos at only plus 400 to win inside the distance. At his price, which is um, 7,300, I think that puts him in live dog category, uh, territory. You know, is he going to win? Mm, probably not. But I do think that his path to victory is, you know, a first or second round KO. So, you know, if you need an underdog, which you're probably going to, I think you could do worse than play Santos. Um, main event. May as well talk about this. I've looked at that. I've looked at this. I've thought of this. And it, it just... My, my, my first instinct was to take Edwards, right? He's 7,100. He's going to have five rounds to work with. And then I'm looking at these odds. He's like a three to one underdog. I mean, I, I, I guess he's got to be in the underdog pool. You know, I, you got five rounds. I mean, he, even in a, first of all, I don't think he's going to knock him out. So you're, you're really playing on a decision. It's fine. Um, I suppose. Uzman, I think is interesting because he, you know, at least he's going to be going for takedowns. I would imagine. I mean, if they just have a boxing match, I think that it's probably an even fight. I think Usman's main edge is in his race, his wrestling. So I think that he could garner more points that way. As a matter of fact, I mean, this is why I think Usman, as opposed to Maverick, 
why do I really want to play Maverick if I could just play Guzman? Very similar. Well, because Maverick is a bigger money line favorite, I guess. And Maverick's going to be 15% owned as opposed to Guzman is going to be 50% owned. So the point is, I don't think the main event is a must play. Okay. Cause I've seen Usman with some boring fights. Um, I saw him live. I saw him against, uh, what's his name? McCov- Covington. I don't say boring fight, but he even wasn't really that great. He had a pretty boring fight against, uh, first time he fought Masvidal when he foot stopped him the whole time. Then he KO'd him, uh, shortly thereafter. Um, so I don't think it's a must fight. Uh, I, I think it's much more important to get guys like Romanoff, much more important to get guys like Pedro at the 9K range. Um, if you if you you know you really want like 120 points or something like that, which is what you want really are looking for out of 9K fighters. And then this last fight, which you didn't talk about, um, I, it just I just don't think it's going to score. You know, I, I've heard some pretty sharp people tell me that that Yanan Wu is very live at plus 100, um, which translated to DraftKings scoring. I mean, 7,900. So, yeah, I mean, she's probably live, but is it really going to score well enough for you to be happy you have it even if it wins? I don't know. Matter of fact, I would rather play something like like AJ Fletcher, I think he could he could get there in a loss. You know? Um, that's the thing. I mean, he could definitely, as a matter of fact, he might have gotten there in a loss last week. I think that he, and I could be talking at a turn here, but I think that he scored more than Semmelsberger, even though he lost. Yeah, look at that. He scored 64 fantasy points in a loss. You know? So um I, I don't think that playing that woman's fight is is the way to go. So w- what have we talked about here? Did I miss any fights? No. So I think you have to separate, you know, not separate them, you have to combine these, these ideas, like the, the inside the distance plays and the grapple plays. You have to play either the Costa, um, uh, Pedro, Altamirano, Right, or you have to play the the um, the the grappling plays, which are the Romanoff, uh, Fletcher, Parent, okay, uh, and 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 Marab. Now the thing is that the Marab is cheap, Fletcher is cheap, right? Romanov is not cheap, but he's got the combination of of uh, grappling upside and finishes. So, like for example, if you really wanted to, I mean, listen, I can't build this whole thing for you, but you, this is what you're really supposed to do. You're supposed to play um, Romanoff, Marab, Fletcher to really start off your line. I mean, that's really what you're supposed to do, okay? Um, and then probably pick one of these um, inside the distance guys. And the problem is, like, if you play Pedro, well, then you got to – like 200 dollars. We already talked about Edwards is pro- probably live. You know what I mean? I gave you Santos as possible. But I think in GPPs, you really do have to start with this stuff. Okay. Um, with this high grappling upside plays. Um, that's just that's just the way you're supposed to play. The only one I'm having trouble getting to is Perrin. And again, I'm just poisoned by my own, you know, my own knowledge of of of, of, of the aqualung here, so to speak. I don't want I listen, I don't want to be after this fight, feeling like a dead duck, so to speak. Okay, that was bad. DFS dad joke, DFS heavy metal joke. Um, that should do it for the uh, preview for the, the fight card. Uh, 200000 for first. I do think that it's possible to take this one down solo. Um, hopefully it's me. But if it's not me, I hope it's you. Good luck, everybody.